Around half a year ago, I reviewed the MSI PS63 Modern, a thin and light 15 inch laptop with a 25 watt quad core CPU and a GTX 1650 Max-Q with 10 hours of battery life. And the feedback from that video was very positive. It seemed like there was a large group of people who wanted a thin and light 15 inch laptop, but because most 15 inch laptops at the time used the more powerful 45 watt CPUs like the XPS 15 or the MacBook Pro, battery life suffered and they had to be a bit thicker and heavier to cool those components. This thing is now running a faster 25 watt 6 core CPU, the same GTX 1650 Max-Q, and pulls about 10 to 11 hours of battery life from my usage, although I have seen other reviews claim 12 hours. The charger now uses USB Type-C and the brick itself is a little bit bigger, but unfortunately, it's not able to power the CPU and GPU under load, and my battery actually dropped from 91% to 30% after 15 hours of continuous load. It's not really an issue since you'll never keep it at 100% for that long, otherwise you'd buy a more powerful laptop, but it's something I gotta mention as a reviewer. The screen assembly has a fair bit of flex. It's not as soft as some cheaper gaming laptops, but I would have liked to have seen a stronger display for the price. The keyboard deck has been reinforced, so there's very little flex. Hinge tension is also great. It's a one hand open, but stiff enough to where if you close it halfway and you start tapping on it, it won't fall shut from gravity. However, there is quite a bit of screen wobble, which seems to be common with this hinge design. The keyboard and the trackpad are both quite good, very few complaints. The key travel is rather short, same with the old one and same with a lot of its competitors like the ZenBook 15 and the Surface Laptop 3. This time around, they moved the brightness, volume and media controls up into the function row rather than having them scattered around the arrow key, so big thumbs up for that. The legends are also large and bolded and the four stage white LED backlighting makes it easy to find all of the keys if you're not much of a touch typist. It did take me around 20 minutes to get used to it, but I really enjoy typing on this and I hope they increase the key travel a bit more for the next revision. The trackpad uses a very smooth glass surface. Button clicks are slightly softer than the Surface Laptop and XPS 15. Very similar to the Razer Blade 15, except lighter actuation force, but this is much quieter than those two laptops, which I value more than button feel if I'm in a class or any quiet environment. Tracking is accurate, but the acceleration curve is slightly off despite using Windows precision drivers. It's fine if I'm moving the cursor across the screen, but it feels a bit too sensitive with slower movements. There's also a fingerprint sensor in the top left corner. Kind of strange placement, particularly if you're right-handed. The speakers are about the same as last year, bottom firing, lax bass. I think there's something wrong with the driver between 7 to 800 hertz because it creates this loud staticky distortion. It's probably just my unit, but I don't have other units to check, unfortunately. But even when you ignore that, it's kind of underwhelming even compared to the average speaker and even worse against the Surface Laptop 3. Strangely enough, it's using the same panel as last year, but all of my measurements seem to have improved, so there's quite a bit of variation between panels. It's a 1080p 60Hz screen, brightness is acceptable, but not very bright. Contrast is also kind of underwhelming, I expect IPS panels to do around 1000 to 1 contrast, but color accuracy is really good though, and color gamut is also very respectable, so if you're doing graphics design or photo editing, this would work quite well. The XPS 15's base 1080p screen is now rated for 500 nits, so I'd like to see MSI use those brighter panels in their future laptops. For ports, you have two Thunderbolt 3, both can be used for charging, HDMI 2.0, a headphone jack, and on the right you have two more USB A's and a micro SD slot. I would have liked to have seen one of the Thunderbolt 3 ports move to the right side so I can charge the laptop from either side, as well as a full size SD slot rather than micro. On the bottom, you'll notice that there's a factory seal sticker, and I was told that if you break this sticker, it voids your warranty. So I can't really show the inside of the laptop, but Task Manager says that the RAM is dual channel, at least on the 16GB configuration. And their spec sheet lists two M.2 slots, which I find kind of funny because you can't actually access a second one without voiding your warranty. But if, for example, a year later, you're buying this off someone used, in that case, the standard one year warranty would have already been over, and then you can upgrade the memory and the storage yourself for cheap. Uh, gaming performance is respectable, but ultimately this laptop is geared towards portability at the cost of some performance. Although thermals were actually really, really good, and it never got close to thermal throttling. So compared to the Surface Laptop 3, 
it is far better in thermals and performance. So recommending this laptop, I think is fairly simple. If you like the general idea of this laptop, but you care more about the screen, the keyboard and the trackpad, I would steer you towards the Surface Laptop 3 15 inch. If you care about performance, ports and upgradability, just at the cost of your warranty, get this instead. I know there's some other laptops that are similar to this, like the ZenBook 15, also with the GTX 1650 Max-Q, but these two are my favorite of the ones that I've tried. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.